it's reckoned to be one of the fastest growing sports in the country, but doctors dismiss it as dangerous and potentially life-threatening. We're talking about cage fighting, something the promoters say is perfectly safe. I've been to find out more about this controversial sport, and you may find some of the pictures upsetting. A lot of the public are believed to be two guys thrown into a cage, no rules, blood everywhere, and it's completely the opposite, really. Cage fighting is gladiatorial combat between individuals, and tragically it can end in either immediate damage or indeed death of an individual. People that compare it to pit and fighting and dog fighting and all that, you know, it's, no, it's not. These are trained fighters, trained athletes, and they're trained by experts. This is Lisa Heigo. At first glance, she might not seem particularly tough, but don't let this scene of family fun fool you. So I started kickboxing probably about 17 years ago. Um, started with doing it basically for self-defence after being attacked walking through through the city centre. Um, two times world champion, two times European champion. She's now making the move from kickboxing to cage fighting and in a matter of weeks will be challenging for the total combat European title. Cage fighting or mixed martial arts as it's also known is what it says on the tin. Two fighters using a blend of styles to beat their opponent. The fights all take place in a cage. Each round lasts for five minutes. You can box, grapple and kick your opponent. And you win by submission or knockout. But there are rules against gouging, biting, butting, groin attacks and other dangerous moves. Neil Hall is a cage fighting referee. He's a fifth dan black belt and has been involved in martial arts for over 25 years also train some of the country's most promising cage fighters. Fighters are now, amazingly, anything from, I don't know, a plumber to a solicitor. IT guys, you know, you name it, they're all doing it. They enjoy the training, it's competitive, there's, there's skill elements to it, and, and, and that's why they enjoy it. But cage fighting is not without its critics. The British Medical Association is dead against it. I don't see this as a sport. I think that we have to recognise that when you're talking about individuals deliberately doing something to harm another person, uh, it's difficult to see that as a sport. The British Medical Association points out that there has been a fatality since the sport began, that of Douglas Dedge, who died shortly after this fight a decade ago. It's not the immediate deaths that worry us the most. It's the chronic injury. It's the fact that people might do this for a few years and not realise that their brain has been irreparably damaged and that 10 years later they may find it difficult to walk, to talk, to hold a pen, to hold a knife and fork, or indeed to hold a conversation. People who don't know anything about it, they think it's barbaric, um, that you're there to rip somebody's head off. And, and, and you're not, you're just in there, you want to win by whatever means, knockout, submission, or a points decision, um, you know, um, it, I think you just need, to, you need, people need to watch it a little bit more to understand. is total combat, one of the first and biggest cage fighting competitions in the north of England. We had allowed punches, elbows, knees and kicks to the head and body standing. So all in basically. The fights are split into semi-professional and professional categories with different rules for each. There are no elbows to the head on the ground. So you can elbow standing as pro, but no elbows on the ground. And each fighter must see a paramedic and be declared fit to enter the cage. The medical staff will sit ringside. Uh, they'll be keeping a close eye on the fighters. Uh, if 
if there is a problem with a fighter, um, it's, it's far much easier to determine any potential injury if you know what's happened to them. Over a thousand people have packed into the stadium, paying between 25 and 40 pounds per ticket to watch 16 fights over four hours. Lisa's fight is near the top of the bill. This is what she's trained for, this is what she's worked for, and the training is much harder than the fighting. You know, so it should be right. In the blue corner, representing Yorkshire Team Assassin in SPG, Lisa Eagle! Corner, representing Holland Team Duncan, Nadia Van Dyl. Her opponent has been flown in from Holland and is highly rated and more experienced in the cage. Unlike other fights, this one stays upright, both trading punches and kicks rather than grappling on the ground. After two rounds of a bruising contest, it's all over. Lisa is the new total combat European champion. Oh gosh, I think it's on the blur actually. The nerves are going, you know, butterflies, but I've got the best coaches, so, you know, I have confidence in, in them. When you saw all those hits going in, you weren't worried for her? I don't want to see her get hurt. That's why we push her as hard as we do. Carl loves her to bits, he pushes her hard, and I push her hard, and she's somewhere that she wants to be. Promoters say cage fighting is one of the fastest growing sports in the country. Those on the inside now want to form a governing body, but as yet, it isn't officially regulated. It remains controversial, but increasingly popular. The future of cage fighting, as you call it, it's massive. It's worldwide already. It's exciting. It's dynamic. It's definitely the sport of the future. We're always prepared to review the evidence, uh, but until the brain uh, is taken out of the legitimate target area, so the head and the neck are protected, then we cannot possibly ever even reconsider approving because we know about the damage that will be done. I think people probably do think I'm slightly mad. Um, what's the point? Um, why can't I be content with what I've already got? And, you know, you could say that about a lot of things. You know, I don't want to be content. I want to be the best.